Welcome to the Crown Score Podcast, virtually alongside Reggie Walker. I am Kevin Stewart. Reg, the preseason behind us, man. We got bye week, I guess, if you will, before they kick off against the Jets. We had the, the final preseason game, the first preseason win for the Panthers on Friday night against Pittsburgh. What did you see that you like? What did you see that you didn't like? Uh, one of the things I, I really liked was the ability to sustain drives by this offense. You know, first drive, 13 plays, second drive, seven plays. Now, the first drive, my issue, again, unable to get all the way into the end zone. Mm-hmm left points on the board there, got down uh, deep inside of uh, Pittsburgh territory and and ended up with nothing. Um, Then the next drive, you kick the field goal. Those need to be touchdowns. Uh, And then you get an interception uh, late in the, in the, uh, uh, you know, the next possession. Brian Burns off that tip drill. Right. You get Brian Burns off a tip drill, tips and overthrows. We talk about that all the Uh time. Then they miss the field goal there. So uh, three opportunities in, positive plus territory and you end up with only three points and i I thought to me uh those are missed opportunities and and if you want to be one of the better teams in the national football league if you want to you know win the division and be a playoff team and make a run you have to capitalize when you get down in plus territory and make sure you come away with points every time now with that being said i thought a lot of guys played well sam darnold looked efficient in the pocket he Mm -hmm. looked comfortable in the pocket made some really good throws um i thought overall he looked pretty good there was a couple that kind of you know weren't the greatest of throws but that i think is going to happen in a game when you get some guys messing around down around your feet in terms of defensive linemen uh but overall i thought he played well uh now for me the one that jumps off the page to me the most uh and maybe this is just me overthinking it but i love what i saw out of chuba hubbard uh and i did have the one drop you love your running backs uh, I do well. I think it's important that you know, in a in an average regular season game, you're talking about probably sixty five plus snaps for an offense, right? Right. If you're, let's just say you're getting seventy snaps. If you can find a way for Chuba Hubbard to get fifteen of those, and McCaffrey cannot be on the field for fifteen of those snaps, he's going to be that much better for you down the stretch in terms of McCaffrey. So if all of a sudden Chuba Hubbard is taking some of those snaps away and the playbook doesn't have to change, right? We Mm -hmm. see him catching the ball out of the backfield. We see him running for positive yards behind this offensive line. I think if that is the case, that gives you a chance to keep McCaffrey healthier throughout the season. That gives you a chance to keep McCaffrey fresh throughout each and every game. Because again, let's remember, and you mentioned uh, getting the day off uh, on Monday. The thing I think, that's about too is remember now they're playing 17 regular season games over 18 weeks you're getting that extra game but you're not getting an extra bye week Mm -hmm. so anytime you can kind of play a little bit of maintenance as a coaching staff uh with your players throughout this long grind of a season i think you find a way to do that and so i think if you can do that with McCaffrey throughout the season and, and, and still get production out of the running back position, i.e. out of Chuba Hubbard uh, or Brown, either of those guys, that is going to bode well for this offense. It sounds like you're alluding to a bit, a bit of a, a load management situation as we see in the NBA, but not quite the same as guys taking full games off, you know, you know, 82 games as opposed to 17. Um, but, you know, it, that brings me back to two years ago uh, when Christian McCaffrey had the thousand yards rushing, thousand yards receiving, and once in, in the same season, he barely took any snaps off. I mean, I, I could, I, I know, I could see in my head Reggie Bonifon having a couple snaps here and there. He had that long touchdown run against Jacksonville, right? Um, but that was a point of emphasis, I believe, going into last season. Uh, if if you if we had a healthy McCaffrey for sixteen games, was Who's going to be his backup? Who's going to be able to spell some time for him and give him the reps that he needs? Obviously, we didn't see that because, you know, he only played three games with the injuries. Um, But that's going to be important. And as soon as they drafted Chuba Hubbard this year, I think we kind of said the same thing, that he could finally be, you know, the guy to spell Christian, give him some reps, uh, give him some some plays off, and keep his legs fresh throughout the entire season. You mentioned Darnold. And I I know it's easy to say the quarterback look good, but, that's one of the two big positions that we're looking forward to this season. Right. Right. Uh, And, 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 you know, early on his offensive line looked shaky. They weren't winning the point of attack, something that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks with the preseason games that we have seen. Uh, The offensive line wasn't winning the point of attack. He had some happy feet. Uh, He felt like, I felt like he was a little, a little anxious, but 
you know, again, it's it's like you're you're in front of the home crowd and it's a new home crowd for you. Uh, you're finally getting some uh, some some long drives here, like some, you know, long. Uh, what's the word? I'm, I'm losing it sustained. here. Yeah, some, some sustained activity. You know, you're going to play a full first half. So I thought maybe Donald was a little bit anxious. Uh, but then we had the muff punt. But I, I, I believe that was from Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, who we've seen that here in Carolina, which led to his release a couple of years ago. That's right. um, so I think that was that that mistake there on McLeod really kind of set them up right for success. You know, I think they were at the 20 to 25. They get the touchdown to, to, to Marshall. And then I believe it was the next drive. Darnold found his old buddy, Robbie Anderson, in the back of the end zone. So he started to settle down. And I think, you know, he started to feel comfortable. Uh, right. and, and he didn't, you know, he looked pretty good. And I'm, feeling pretty optimistic about Darnold uh, as we approach week one against the Jets. Uh, I am too. I, I, I think, I think he, he showed that he is more than capable at the position. Um, now we did see some situations and, and, and I want to bring this up just because from a fan standpoint, um, this was a big point of contention with Teddy Bridgewater last year. The new Broncos sometimes, starting quarterback. Teddy correct. Bridgewater. Sometimes the defense is going to make you check the ball down. OK, of course. So there were times where Sam Donald was checking the ball down. And I think Steve Smith even called him. The, he's, he said something to the effect of, oh, he's being checked down, Charlie. <laughs> and some of that is right. Maybe the quarterback being conservative. And some of that is being forced to do that by the defense. And, and uh, one of the reasons I'm always uh, I, I always want to remind people of that is, is actually if you take it back a couple of years um, when Carolina remember the game. Carolina went down to Houston, played Deshaun Watson and the Texans. And early in the game, I, I want to say Deshaun Watson hit a big play. And after that, he didn't hit anything deep down the field. And they asked him after the game about that. And he said, hey, look, I don't want to sound you know, difficult here, but let's exp- let me tell you what they were doing. And he started explaining the actions by the safeties and how essentially the Panthers played a shell over the top and kept everything in front of them. That is something that a lot of teams in the NFL are going to try to do to Sam Darnold and this offense and force them to throw the football underneath and then rally up to the football. So I think that's something to watch. So while sometimes people get a little frustrated that you're not forcing the ball down the field, if you're forcing it, chances are it's going to get picked off. So I'm okay uh, with checking it down, if you will, at times if the defense forces you to do that. Um, and so I think Sam Darnold did a pretty good job uh, in the game of doing that. Now, what we don't know is how much Pittsburgh was showing, how exotic they were fully being with their blitz packages, uh, how many of the starters were really playing uh, from what we understand, not many, if any at all. Um, and so those are all factors in this. Uh, but I think for the most part, look, that's what I expected to see uh, from this offense, especially if if indeed, obviously, it was against the twos from Pittsburgh. You better dominate the twos of another team if you're the ones. If <laughs> right. you're not, we've got a bigger problem. Right. Uh, you, you know, you, you mentioned Bridgewater, and, and he checked down a lot last year, and he tended to do so. Um, but there were some times last year where he had opportunities to hit his receivers downfield, and I don't have any specifics off my head, top of my head because I didn't think about we were going to talk about this today, but there were some times where he had opportunities to, to throw the ball downfield, and he felt a little scared, so he checked down. The thing with Darnold, like his tenure with the Jets was, you know, he sees that opportunity and, and it's not, it's quite, the window is a little cl- closer, a little more closed than it was for Teddy at, at times. And he would try to force it and he would lead to turnovers and interceptions. So I don't mind uh, Darnold checking down in those situations because I, I'd rather have, you know, a, a four yard gain as opposed to giving the ball to the other team. I agree. And, and there was one in, in the game to where, I think if he throws that ball a half a second sooner, he avoids a sack. Uh, he ended up taking that sack. Again, that's going to happen at yeah. times as well. Uh, but for the most part, what you don't want to see is him on his back consistently uh, and or him having to try to run around consistently to make plays. That is not the strength of Sam Darnold's game. The strength of his game is standing in that pocket, throwing that football down the field. And it's going to come down to whether or not this offensive line consistently gives him the time to do that. And to add to that, Part of that is also on Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall, uh, Dan Arnold, David Moore, all of those guys, uh, uh, Ian Thomas, who caught a pass also, 
a uh, nice mm-hmm. job on a crossing route. They moved the pocket, which I thought was excellent uh, by the Carolina Panthers and Joe Brady. Moved the pocket at times with Sam Darnold to make it hard for that defense to know exactly where he's going to be on every drop. I like that philosophy. Um, and I think if you do that and these guys on the outsides that I was just mentioning do their job in creating separation consistently, this team has a chance to be pretty good. I will say this, this skill group of guys, right, at the receiver position, obviously we know Robbie and DJ were, were on this team last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ian Thomas was on this team last year. But now you add a David Moore, a Terrace Marshall, a Dan Arnold, a Chuba Hubbard. The skill positions are better unequivocally than they were last year. No doubt. So there is no excuse for this offense to struggle from that regard unless the offensive line is struggling uh, from their standpoint. And that's, that's to me, that's the biggest red flag that we're going to see going into the season uh, is the offensive line. Um, as I said earlier, it, it looked a really dicey early, uh, early in that game against Pittsburgh. Uh, the, the defensive line, they were the twos. The twos were in Darnold's face. Uh, you know, so the offensive line, it, to me, is the biggest the biggest reason to worry about the upcoming season uh, f- for the Panthers. Is otherwise, I think they're going to be – they have a shot to make that, you know, the wild card position because, obviously, I think the Bucs are going to win uh, the NFC South. But I think the offensive line is going to be the biggest, the biggest point of emphasis, you know, going into this 2021 season. I will say this, the positive to the offensive line, let me just throw this out there. And and I've been very bullish on, I get why and how the, um, the joint practices with other teams work. Right. But Mm -hmm. this was essentially the first time we definitively saw the ones for an extended period of time together on the field facing live action. I think that's important because if they have, when you don't have that, there's an issue with the continuity. The more you do it, the more the continuity can improve. So I think just having those extended reps in this previous preseason game against Pittsburgh, I think will allow <laughs> them to have something film-wise to grow and improve upon. I, I think, yeah, I think you're right. But I think right now we have Taylor Moten and four question marks. Uh, because, you know, Matt Paradis, you know, he's, you know, he came over here from Denver a couple of years ago and everybody's pretty optimistic about him coming over from there. Uh, you know, he had a play where he got sp- completely spun around. And it was, a, I think it was a play that you were talking about where Darnold held onto the ball for, you know, a second or two longer than he should have. Uh, he has been a disappointment since he's come over. Um, and and every, everybody else, Cam Irving, I mean, it's all, it's all a big question mark um, as we head into week one. You mentioned Steve Smith earlier and his hey. commentary. His commentary is so funny and it's so raw and so real. I mean, when I think when Santoso hit the 52 yarder and then Sly missed his field goal, I think he said something about Joey Sly better be packing up his apartment. And if he lives in the view, which is a high rise luxury apartment building here in uptown Charlotte, then he better take the service elevator. And uh, yeah, uh, he was so good. And I hope he gets more opportunities on Panthers radio going forward. Uh, but since we last taped, they brought in a kicker last week in Dominic Eberly. He quickly, he was, he was gone faster than Denzel Perryman was here in, uh, Ooh. in care in Carolina. Uh, and then they traded That's facts though. It, it's facts. And then they traded for Ryan Santoso, who was the backup at the giants for, uh, for Graham Gano, who Joey Sly took the job from here in Carolina. So, you know, put all that together. Uh, yeah, about that. But now Joey Sly is gone. Santos is going to be the starter. I mean, it, this is this was the right move, right? Yeah, I think so. Again, it, it goes back to, and I said this, you know, here on Crown Sport. I'd rather have a kicker that I know four yards and in, I can count it, as opposed to a guy that I go, yeah, he can probably hit a 63-yarder uh, because he's got a big leg. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, he doesn't know where the football is going. Right. That's scary. And so, uh, as a coach who – you know, you're trying to turn, you know, an organization around. This is an organization that hasn't had a winning season in a few years. And you're trying to create a culture of winning. And and so part of winning is putting points on the board. Smitty talked about that a lot on the broadcast as well. And if you can't put points on the board, um, obviously touchdowns aren't always going to be the solution. You want it to be the case, but they're not always. So you've got to have a kicker uh, that can put some points on the board. And, and I'll say this. Santoso looks more like a linebacker in certain ways than he does a kicker. <laughs> He's a big guy. Big boy. Um, 
But what he better be big at is making kicks. How about that? Yeah, I mean, you want your drives to end in kicks, either a field goal or a point after the touchdown. All good drives end in a kick, Kev. Yeah. Even a punt is a good drive because you didn't turn the football over. Right. So at the end of the day, any football coach will tell you, all good drives end in a kick. Yeah, you know, I, I look at Joey Sly, and, uh, you know, we wish him well. I mean, he seems like he's a good guy. I've seen some interviews here, and we, we hope he finds some, some employment, and I think he will. He will. Uh, you know, I, I kind of look at him like, you know, a kicker with a big leg is like a pitch, a starting pitcher with good stuff. You know, he's got good stuff. You know, his, his breaking ball, you know, it, it, it slides across his own. Right? It, it spins across the plate really well. But unless you know where it's going, it doesn't matter. You know, so with Sly, it was, yeah, like you said, big leg and make it from 60, maybe 65 as he tried last year a couple of times against Kansas City and I believe New Orleans, but. You know, it, accuracy, it, that's that's the main game here with kickers, and he needs to be accurate. Uh, defensively, what, what, what do you like going into the season? Like, what have you seen from in the preseason? I mean, Brian Burns like looks like himself. Uh, for me, Dante Jackson seems like he's jumped off the page a little bit. Uh, making some, he made some, some big tackles on, on Friday night against Pittsburgh. Uh, what do you like going into this 2021 season uh, defensively for the Panthers? They are – Fast. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, I love how fast they are. And, and think about this, right? You've got Brian Burns playing one defensive end, which, by the way, I, I, I like the way Morgan Fox is playing. His versatility saw him inside a couple of times as well on that defensive line. I think that's going to help. But you've got a situation where you've got Hassan Reddick, who could come off of one side, um, and Brian Burns come off the other side. If you want to play around with the linebackers, you can move Reddick to the same side as Brian Burns. You, there's so many different things you can do from a versatility standpoint uh, to get after the quarterback. And uh, the other added piece from what I saw, especially the other night, <laughs> Derek Brown goes forward. Yes. Daquan Jones goes forward. Those are two guys that like to be in the backfield. Think about this, Kev. If those two guys are pushing the pocket, and let's just say, for instance, and this is no slight to Morgan Fox. I think he's a good player. But let's just say, for instance, You've got Gross Matos coming off one edge, Brian Burns coming off the other edge, and you bring an extra, a plus one, and Reddick's coming, right, on the same side as Gross Matos, and you've got Jones and, and uh, Derek Brown pushing the pocket in the middle. Where does a quarterback go? Nowhere but down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I like that about this group. I think Dante Jackson kind of received a message. Number one, he's healthy right now. Right. Uh, but number two, I think he received a message when they went out and drafted AJ, uh, I'm sorry, drafted JC Horn and then picked up AJ Boye in free agency. That was a message to Dante Jackson. You've got to be better. And I've said several times, if Dante Jackson ends up being your third corner and now chances are, my guess is at least if they do that, in those situations where they play nickel, they'll keep Jackson outside. They'll have Horn on the outside on the other side, and then they can play Boye in the slot um, as a bigger corner, or they can play Jackson in the slot um, as the third corner as well. So I think you have some versatility there. But I will tell anybody, if Dante Jackson is my third corner, I've got a better third <laughs> corner than most teams in this league. I've got a better third corner than most teams have a third receiver in this league. And so I think when you add those things up, um, and you add to it the speed of this defense. Uh, you got Shaq and his ability. Remember, Shaq's a guy that can play deep. He can cover a tight end 15, 20, 25 yards down the field because he can run with them. All of a sudden, you look at this defense, you see all the speed, you see all the versatility. And oh, by the way, there seems to be some depth on it. It's all going to come down to how Phil Snow deploys these guys from week to week. But I think if he does a good job with that, I think the sky's the limit for this defense. And Jeremy Chin is adjusting to playing safety mm. very, very well. And you're going to have um, – Dante's going to have a chance to really show out these first two weeks uh, with Boye being suspended. What, what, hey, refresh my mind. They run a 3-3-5 three, three, on, de on defense? They're multiple. They're going to play some 3-4. They're going to play some 4-3. They're going to – you're going to see some 3-3 three, three kind of – sets with the nickel package behind it they're going to be very very multiple with this defense which i think can be a very good thing when you have so many pieces um but at the same time i think my fear is i don't want to see them in too many three-man fronts when you've got guys like brian burns gross matos morgan fox that right. can play those in spots and really come off the edge. And then you could have you know, your linebackers like you said it could be very flexible with reddick you can have them on the line 
I mean, right. it's just, it's just, I, I feel like this defensive line and this defensive front is going to be so terrifying for, for opposing quarterbacks and, and offenses that I, I, I think it's going to be an absolute field day every Sunday for Phil Snow uh, going up against, you know, the NFL's best every, every week. But I, I think defensively this team, and I've said it on social media, I've said it here on the, I, I think that they're going to be a top 10 defense uh, in this league. And it's what's going to help them make a wild card run th- th- this season. I think they're certainly talented enough to be one of the better defenses in this league. And, and, and the main reason why I say that is when you can push the pocket up front in the middle and get to the quarterback off the edges, and then you can run on the back seven, you've got a chance. And, and this team has all of those pieces. And it seems to me that they've created some depth. Now it's going to be interesting um, who all right finally fits into this roster defensively, but I think they've got a chance to be really good. Uh, speaking of defensively, Denzel Perryman, as I said earlier, it was shipped out of town. Um, you know, they brought him in this offseason, and I think people were pretty high on him. Uh, but uh, they like Jermaine Carter, and, and I like Jermaine Carter, and he's going to be the starting Mike linebacker uh, going forward. I mean, what, do you, what do you make of that? I love it. I mean, yeah. another fast linebacker uh, with, with Reddick and Shaq Thompson. And, then, you know, there's so many guys that, that you know, I thought showed – at least speed defensively at that linebacker spot, the Frankie Louvus of the world um, mm-hmm. throughout, throughout, uh, throughout training camp and, and uh, the preseason. So uh, who all is going to make this team is going to be the fun part. But I tell you what, defensively, it's a whole bunch of dudes that can run and a whole lot of dudes that are violent when they get to the football. Yeah. And we hope Jermaine Carter can take over that Mike position pretty well, because to hear Whitehead last year did not. That was bad. Um, we are less than two weeks away from finally the, the, the 2021 season kicking off uh, Panthers Jets week one Bank of America Stadium. Uh, but, but before then, Reg, I know you're busy this week, man. Where, where can we find you this week on uh, TV on your Charlotte? All right. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, first and foremost, I mean, it's a lot, right? Um, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, so I am the uh, radio analyst for Gardner Web Football. So um, Tuesday, um, you can find Tuesday evening. Um, I'll be, uh, on the Gardner Webb, uh, football podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so that'll, that'll come out on Tuesday, Wednesday, I'll be on uh seven 30 game at four 45, uh, here in Charlotte, that's ESPN radio. Um, and then obviously at some point, um, throughout the week, I'll get, I'm going to get up to Charlotte, um, talk to coach Will Healy and that crew. Um, I have their game hosting Gardner Webb on September 11th. Um, that's, that's going to be at six o'clock. Um, that's going to be a TV game. Um, so I'll get up to Charlotte, uh, sometime on Tuesday. And then, uh, uh, I I mentioned Wednesday and then, uh, Friday, I'm going to, uh, my plan is to attend, uh, the Charlotte game hosting Duke on Friday night. And then Saturday, I'll get up early, go down to Georgia Southern, um, Gardner Webb plays Georgia Southern at 6 PM. Uh, so you can catch that on WGNC AM FM. Uh, just check your tune in radio app to find that. Um, that game is a Saturday, six o'clock kick. And then I'll come back and then Sunday I'll get some rest, uh, watch some college football, I'll hang out with you hopefully on Monday. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll, we'll get another crown score situated and then we'll be back at it for the following week. So a uh, busy week for me, but it's game week. I love it. Put the coffee on, brother. Jesus. And you All know what's right. crazy? I don't even drink coffee, man. I just drink water, bro. That's something wrong with you. You need to be caffeinated. <laughs> I'm high on life, man. I'm high on life. Yeah, clearly. All right, brother. I'll see you next week. Another Crowds World Podcast. Later, brother.